Hey, good morning, my friends. Shit, it's early this morning. It's like 10 minutes till 7. <laughs> Actually, I had to set the alarm for 6 a.m. I got my man picking this up at 7. Well, you say 7, but everybody here in the Philippines is on Filipino time, so if you say 7, hey, it's just a suggestion. Time is more of a, of a suggestion when you leave the West, and it's a reason that we love it, and it's a reason that you'll hate it. <laughs> you know, in America, if you're if you're not at least five minutes early to a meeting, you know you're late. You know, usually 15 minutes, but you can't walk into a meeting late. It's horrible, right? But once you leave that environment, it's uh, time is not as important it's not like a hard deadline it's a suggestion so how do you mitigate that well the way i do it so i don't get upset is if i need to leave at eight i just tell the driver to be there at seven and if he does get there on time well hey, you're paying him he he's got to wait on you but if you have a time frame, you get really got to be somewhere, you tell them an hour early. And that's just the way it's got to be. I mean, for two reasons. Number one, they'll, they'll, they'll be there on time, your time. And number two, if the guy doesn't show up or bails on you, it gives you an hour to find another cab or whatever you got to do. Uh, so anyhow, that's what I do. But hopefully my man will be on time this morning. Because the other thing, like it was raining yesterday. And, you know, the street floods a little bit. And I'm like, damn, you know, I hope it ain't raining like that in the morning because the damn streets flooded. Now we can get around it, what have you. But, you know, nobody wants to move stuff in the rain. But so far right now, I think better knock on some bamboo. It's not raining. That subject should change at any moment. And folks, not that we have a whole lot of stuff to move. We're going to move everything that we've got in the van. And plus, uh, he'll pick up a refri our refrigerator later. I'm keeping that refrigerator as a dedicated beer cooler. That's the only reason I didn't give that thing away, too. I was like, wait a minute. I can put all my beer and ice and liquor in a dedicated riff. It's got to go with me. But everything else pretty much is being given away. A lot of it we're just sending up to Janice. Um, just so she can add some more furnishings to her place. She's getting all the wood tables here. All the nice, beautiful wood tables. And the bamboo. She said she'd like the bamboo. So all that's going up there. And she doesn't have an aircon yet, so we're gonna send the aircon up there. Brand new LG. Keep her cool. Because um, where we're going, we don't need it. And plus, like I said, all this stuff is just anchors is preventing me from being expeditionary. The ref, one of the reasons I'm taking the refrigerator is because where we're going, that's our friends over there, so at some point when we do punch out, I can leave it there at my friend's house and uh, he can get some benefit of it or if I come back, I can pick it up. Other than that, you know, it's just uh, personal stuff we're moving in the van. I mean, this is all my computer gear right here. That's pretty much it. I say computer. Computer gear, camera gear, all that good stuff. And that's way overkill. I love that big Sony camera right there, though. But, I made a lot of videos with, the, with two pieces of equipment back in the day. iPhone, MacBook Air. I was traveling so slim. I mean, I literally had uh, the power cord, the MacBook Air, the iPhone, and one cable. That's all I carried around for a lot of videos. I mean, 100, 200 videos. You don't have to get complicated like this if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, iPhone, MacBook Air, 
Boom, you're good to go. I carried that one backpack over there, that Arcteris Breeze. So we're we're about to move and displace. Where are we headed? Nothing new. Nothing nothing out of the ordinary, nothing new. The alarm went off, which means uh, my man's supposed to be here and cut the video. I always forget to do that. Put it on do not disturb. You know, if you're shooting video, you put it on do not disturb, then it doesn't interrupt your board when it broadcast. You're probably wondering why we bounce back and forth from here uh, to Angeles and why my plans often change. Folks, it's like this. You have to adapt to the situation. And the faster you're able to adapt to the situation, the better off you are. If you make plans to go this way, down this road, and all of a sudden it starts raining and the road floods, how long are you going to sit there and, and watch and wait for the damn floodwaters to go down when you can just back up, take the bridge, and go over the floodwaters? So, adapt. You have to adapt to the changing, the emerging situation. Anyhow, so for, uh, best for us is to uh, scoot out of here, close down the Uptown Bungalow. It's been a great stay. Our landlord, the neighbors, everybody's just wonderful people here. Wonderful people. But it's time to leave Barrio Barreto, put that in the rearview mirror. I mean, obviously got a lot of friends over here. Everybody over here knows us. We've been here for a while, but it's time to... Just put it in the rear view mirror and take a step forward in anticipation of the next step forward. If that makes sense. It's not checkers, it's a game of chess. And you may have a strategy in your mind, then the guy makes a move that you're not anticipating and now your whole entire strategy changes. That's the way I look at the game of life. It's just a chess game. It's a chess game, but you can't predict your opponent's ne next move. In some cases you can, but not always. He has a, a range of moves that he can make, he or she can make. And you're trying to anticipate, you know, 10 moves ahead. If he goes here, I go here. But you never really know for certain until what? Until the opponent makes his move. And now your brain kicks in about your possibilities for the next move. So that's sort of how I look at it. That's, that's sort of how you look at life. And a lot of people, they're afraid to make a change. They're afraid to make a change. They're afraid to make a move. As uh, humans, we, we love that comfort and security and that familiarity of our situation. And that's why most people, um, they, well, all people fear change. It's just sort of human nature. But, you know, if you're, if you're one of those that uh, you've been in a job for, say, seven years and you don't like your job, but it's comfortable. You know everybody, you're scared to go put in an application, go through an interview process and meet new people. I got it, but if, if, you, if you don't like where you're at and you don't want to try to take it to the next level, I mean, just stay in that comfortable job you don't really like, it's easy. It, that's, that's the easy part, that's the comfortable part. But if you want to get somewhere, you got to take a risk. I've never gotten anywhere new without taking some type of risk or having to meet new people or having to face new people. Um, that's just my experience in life. And luckily, I guess luckily, for, from my standpoint, 
I'm glad I took all those risks. I'm glad I faced all those new people, faced those interview boards, filled out all that paperwork to to go from here to there to there to there. And it just leads you on to the next adventure. If I had to work the same job for 30 years, that's not me. And when I say that same job, I mean, you know, if you're working in a factory or something and you go to the factory every day and you work that same job for 30 years, I mean, my hat's off to you. If you're making your living that way and it's a comfortable living and you enjoy what you do, that's one thing, but I, I can only speak from my perspective. That's not me. It's never been me. Now, if you're working for some type of job where your scenery changes every two years and your job position changes every two years, you know, say if you're in the military or something, that's different. You're constantly doing something new. Uh, but I've worked in a factory before, didn't like it. Every day, all I did was contemplate how the hell am I getting myself out of here. For 8, 10, 12 hours, however long I was on shift, I just sat there and I was a robot, what I was doing. So I disassociated my mind with what my body was doing because a robot really could have done my job and probably is doing the job that I used to do with today's technology. So you're just like a robot with this assembly line, with this shit coming down. And I would disassociate my mind and just think of how the hell I was getting out of that situation. What was I going to do? What was my next move? What was my strategy? What were my options? How the hell do I get myself off of this assembly line? And oh, by the way, how in the hell did I get myself onto this assembly line? And I thought about that. And then of course, the other, the other only thing that a person in a factory uh, working on an assembly line thinks about is when the hell is that bell going to sound? You know, that bell for break. There's a damn bell or a horn or a siren, whatever goes off. And then you get to go on your 10 minute break. Go, you know, go over there, take a quick piss, get something to drink. You're just fucking exhausted. Then here comes that. Then you're praying, please don't rain. Here comes the bell again. You're back on that line. So, folks, I, I, I do a lot of talking and people think, uh, you know, I'm living. I am. I'm living the dream. But my whole life has been living the dream. It really has. My whole my whole entire life I've been living the dream. Even when I was on that fucking assembly line. You know, I was living the dream in certain ways, but it wasn't during those 8 to 12 hours a day, I assure you. And so that's just what I thought about. When's the buzzer going to ring so I can get off the assembly line? And how the fuck am I permanently getting myself out of here? And, you know, eventually I got myself out of there. And I remember when I told him I was going to quit, it was like shocking to everybody because everybody working in the factory had worked there for years. They worked there for years and they probably worked there till they died. So some of y'all, nah, that's probably been too long ago. But hell, I don't know. Some of y'all might still be on that assembly line. Because most people, once you get in that comfort zone, it's scary to get out of that comfort zone, especially if you have to do it on your own, if you have to take the initiative. Now, if somebody's pushing you, say you're, you're about to lose your job or, or something, if you have an external pressure, external factors, well, obviously it scoots you out of there. It, it, it pushes you out. You have to make a move. But if you're comfortable, you're getting a paycheck, uh, even though you don't like your job, a lot of people just stay. It's easy. It's easier. But that's never been me. Anyhow, enough for the morning philosophy. It's time for us to displace breaking down the uptown bungalow here in downtown Barrio Barreto. Praying that the rain don't come. All right, let me call my man and see where he's at, folks. Appreciate y'all joining us. Bottom right hand corner of your screen, hit that overstay road sign. Ring that bell like Rocky. Yo, Adrian. Get on board our train. Certainly appreciate it. Rolling that again, folks. Maria's got cookies. Uh, you gonna share the cookies with Mama? Mama Timo? 
All right, folks, we're headed out of Barrio Barreto. Time to put Barreto in the rear view mirror. One last look around the marketplace here. And I realize you're looking through glass, but hey, it's a rainy day. And we're riding in this limousine. I don't want to get water inside the limo. Anyhow, you've seen that side a million times. But look at this sight back here. Got that one over there who's just dreaming of going to sleep. Yeah, I do Don't worry about your sleep, baby. We're adults. I do. Yeah, Filipinos think differently about sleep, folks. It's the most important thing in their life. And this girl right here, she loves cookies. <laughs> Maria Masarap. <laughs> My sweetie girl. All right, there goes the coffee shop. Barrio Barreto, until we see you again, my friend. Peace out. Hey, folks, you can't make this shit up, right? So, obviously, we had to pack everything up yesterday and cleaning out the ref, cleaning out everything, getting ready to move. So, I go in there, you know, doing my last walkthrough. <laughs> Nothing's in the ref. It's cleaned out. Open the freezer. There's a bag of ice, which all right, no big deal. There's a thing of popsicles. All right, no big deal. Give that to the neighbor kids. And there's a fish head. A fish head in a Ziploc bag. Big old fish head off that tuna. So I'm like, you know, I'm just laughing. So I go out there and I give the popsicles and the bag of ice to the uh, the neighbor girl I said here you know give the kids some popsicles I'm holding that fish head and I said hold on a second let me check with Fatima about this fish head because I don't know how long it's been in there I'm assuming it's from the fish last week but I want to make sure we weren't giving them some old stock so I go Fatima you want to give this fish head to the neighbor and folks, she's like, yeah, 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 just give that away. But then I looked deep into her eyes. And she was so angry at me for giving away that fish head. She was angry. She was saving that fish head to go on this journey. Weren't you, baby? Uh, Admit it. So anyway, I think now secretly she's angry at me for giving away that fish head. Baby, don't worry. I'll get you a new fish head, okay? I promise. I'll give the fish to my girlfriend. I'll give you the fish head. Good deal? <laughs> so sweet, Maria. Well, smoke a little bit early. Converge don't open till 09. Here in a long pole. I thought they opened at 08. But a thought like lit. Thought wrong. Maria. If you go to uh, Converge, at least here in Longpo, make sure you got your grinding helmet on there, Coach Cheese. So I was sitting in the van for about 20 minutes, and then get up there, be the first hog at the trough, first man at the door, get it knocked out. There's one of their trucks right there, about to roll out on a day of installation. And where this is at, it's right across from Savers Appliances. Right here in Longapo. Wow. There's just some news. There's a grand opening. October 15th. You get limited edition freebies at 7-Eleven. Near SBGP Gate 4. The building right there. Beautiful newer, I don't want to say new, but newer building across from Converge here. It says commercial retail and spaces for lease. And I was just taking a look up here and I was like, you know what? It'd be nice to have that penthouse. Four floor penthouse. Overlooking the beautiful Long Post City. All right, folks, we gotta see how beautiful the toll booth lady's gonna be. I told you, all the ladies working these toll booths here in the Philippines are beautiful. If you had a, uh, 
Miss Philippine contest, Miss Universe, all they need to do is go around these toll booths and have a pageant, and the winner of that pageant will win the Miss Universe contest. That's what I'm thinking. If I'm lying, I'm dying. See? Was I lying? Going in reverse here, I think the gate might be broken. A little synchronized reverse operation going down. What's up with that, John Paul? The gate broke. Everybody's going in reverse. Hmm. Things to make you go, hmm. What happened? Did he get did he just get the VIP treatment? Some things don't make no sense. Alright, future Miss Universe right here. Thank you, thank you. So sweet. Outstanding. Pulled over by the checkpoint here. My God. He opened up the door. He opened up the door. Saw all this mess back here. He's like, oh shit. I don't want to. Nah, the guards are just doing their jobs, folks. I'm complaining, but I'm not. They get they got a tough job to do, whatever the regulations are. And you know, most of it I don't understand. So he just looks in here, sees a van full of stuff. I guess if it's cargo, there's a different set of rules. Maybe you can't pass through if it's if you're carrying cargo. That's probably the most likely explanation. But when he looked back here and saw these damn mattresses. <laughs> he looked back here and saw the damn mattresses. <laughs> a bag of dirty laundry. He know that ain't no car go. <laughs> All right, man, we good to go? Yes, sir. All right, we're good. <laughs> All right. All right, so apparently that, that is the problem. It's uh, We have so much crap in the back of this van that it could be construed as cargo, and you either can't pass through with cargo, or maybe they try to charge you. And you char they charge you a tax if you cut through with cargo? Yes. All right, whatever. So we got so much crap, that's what we got caught up in. If we were just riding in this van with three suitcases in the back, it wouldn't have been an issue. Uh, so anyhow, we have a pass of sorts to get out on the other end without anybody questioning us. Hey, it is what it is, folks, but we're here underway, rolling into Angeles City. Yeah, it just looks like a lazy, lazy, gloomy, gloomy day. Look at this little dude. Folks, you see these little young children? Look at these little guys just running around. I mean, that's what you see here in the Philippines. Nobody's supervising that child. This little dude over here about Forrest G's age. <laughs> well, maybe, hello. Maybe that's supervision. You see kids around here running around, you have no idea who's supervising them or if anybody is supervising them. A lot of times they're not. It'd be a six-year-old supervising a two-year-old. Just the way things are done here, certain situations. All right, nice green Jeep. Margarita Station. Oh yeah, perfect girl. Thanks for hanging these up because they're about to go into action. You understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. What am I talking about? Going to stay in beer. I'm going to start drinking beer today. Uh, I haven't drank any beer in, what, three months now? No, th I'm sorry, three weeks. Maybe even a month, I'll have to check the calendar. But today is the day. Baby, I got to drink some beer. Okay, no problem. I got a beautiful wife and some Daisy Dukes. I got two beautiful children playing here with some brand new toys my buddy gave them. Life is perfect except I got no cold beer in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I'm finna rectify that problem, baby. I'm gonna dispatch this girl over to the stove. Ah, addiction. You and Maria are always going to the store, Fatima. Hey, there was something, something blocked the camera lens for a second there. It just went black. I'm not sure what happened, baby. Maria, let's go to the store. That's a big one. Maria? That's what Fatima said. Hand me the tripod. She brings me a backpack. Can't make this shit up. I said, hey baby, hand me that tripod over there. She puts the backpack in my lap. I'm like, what what is this? <laughs> Honey, all the dancing in the world. You look beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. But your dance skills. <laughs> baby, I they can't even call this dance <laughs> skills. Honey. <laughs> Honey, can we work on your English? I love to be seated and seated. Okay, let me give you an example. Tripod. I know the thing, but over there is a backpack. I, I'm just only mistaken. <laughs> you, Let's go number. Well, we're going to mount this thing it's right here. That way uh, we'll take his TV out because that's just, you know, the babies are always... What they like to do is when they see things, sometimes they think it's like the iPad and they can touch it on the TV. So they're trying to get to the TV, which is not good. And that's what we're gonna do this morning, folks. Installation time. Oh yeah, look at that, real nice. Look at that. On the wall. Now the babies can't turn the thing over. 